Nice. Hey. So this is the uh, police spending and budgets and contracts subcommittee. Uh, we are recording and we're going to start now with a roll call. Would you like to send this off to us? Sure. Um, so yes, and the recording will be available at, on Northampton Open Media's website. Um, okay, roll call. Lois. Here. Dan. Here. Michael. Here. Josie. Here. Great. <laughs> Amen. And there are no minutes for you yet, but there will be soon. Sure. Nice. So if there's no minutes, we can't approve them because they're they don't exist, right? Correct. Okay, cool. So we'll Thank we will you. move that and just table that till uh it is possible. Does this Perfect. sound good with everyone? Nice. Cool. So today we are uh co-writing our proposal. Uh, I saw that there's some work added. I worked on um, the first part. I kind of expanded on it. Uh, I also removed instances of passive voice because I felt like it really watered down what we were trying to say. And um, I don't know, but uh, I haven't shared it because I don't know how that works without breaking open. I'm more than happy to kind of show my process. Uh, but if anyone else wants to go first, it's also fine. I can I can wait. I mean, you can share them. We just can't discuss them or like make comments on each other's writing and things like that. So you can still share a document, um, just like I did, and just say this is for discussion. You know, at a particular meeting. Yeah. Um, we can also just share the links now because we're going to be co-writing together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I dropped mine into the chat. Um, uh, do we want to make it so that you view them or are capable of editing them? Because if we drop it in the chat, we would have to do it like individually if we wanted to exclude members of the public from the chat, right? I mean, you can just set the link to anyone with the link and edit and then afterwards change it back to make it the easy. Only, okay. Sure. The only people that can edit is us. Right. And uh, I also made changes, and I don't know whether anybody saw them or not, because I still don't understand about Google Docs. Um, but I did, I did write changes. I put them in green, hopefully, so people could see them. And uh, did anybody see those? Yeah, I think I saw them briefly. I like sort of swerved through. Yeah, um, you know, I'll give I'll put the link in chat for Lois's um, documents as well. I I also changed some of the language in it too. Uh, so maybe we made some of the same changes. I don't know. Yeah, I, I only poked at uh, three and four. Um, and it looks like that's, uh, it, it looks like you did one, like the intro and then one and five and a couple things in two too. So I don't think we overlap. Yeah. yeah. I think we, ex yeah. we worked outside of each other. <laughs> I thought you were writing on it while I was writing on it. I thought I saw you. I thought I wasn't sure, uh, but I didn't see all of those graphs and everything, pie chart. Yeah, it could have been like, I think that was just my fault. I, I had two instances of like, I had like yours open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Like when I was reading okay. it, and then I had one that I was working on. I think I might have got them confused at one point. Okay. So there's the graph in there, but there's others that I added. Um, I'm trying to figure out. I mean, I don't know. Maybe somebody has a suggestion. Um, should we do it by just starting from the top and going down? Or I, I don't know how. I just don't know how to do this. Like, 
between your, well, you have yours is like a three and four dosage. I don't know what, what pieces you changed here. Um, I, I just, I, I don't know, maybe somebody who's smarter than me about this can figure out how to uh, do it. Was, I can't figure out how well, we can meld all these to be able to see everybody's yeah. changes simultaneously. I just don't get, I understand how to do it. What I sent just a rewrite of the of the first of the first section to include a couple things, remove instances of passive voice, and uh, let's look at yours. Kind of, we look at yours and look at mine and see if sure. they're the same or different or what we want to go with or something. I don't know how else to do it. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Um, so where's so I have so many tabs open at the moment. I just had it up. It's so weird. Did I close it? No, this is it. Oh, I see what happened here. The the name. So I don't know. Okay, so this is my rewrite of the first of the first paragraph. What it was before. Hope you to make the type a little bigger. I can't hardly read that. Sure, sure, sure. So let's do. We can do tabs to row it. I can boost it up to 14, which is what I use with my students. Um, 15 is fine too. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So I, I, I made it a little bit lengthier in the process, but uh, the really allocation recommendations for that recent 10% of funding, the funding that has recently been reallocated. Uh, do you all want me to read it or do you want to read no, it yourself? We can read it. We can read it. Okay. Okay. I'll just let me know if you need me to scroll down. Um, Josie, I. I had to request access because the one that you sent in chat doesn't. Um, yeah, I had the same problem. Sure, it sure, sure. Information set. Um, let me just rename it real quick. Mm, I see. Yeah, yeah, I see what happened. I need to make it anyone with the link. That was the issue. Because you are not part. There we go. I'm stuck at the. Oh, there we go. So that I can have access to it. Get it. There we go. Um, I, if we could read, mine is similar in some ways. I mean, it's less, it has fewer words, let's say. Right. Uh, but basically, so it starts out with the paragraph 
the opening paragraph that Dan wrote, uh, like whenever the beginning of this was. And so I left that in there and about what the budget is. And then I, I, I don't know how to get to mine. If somebody could just click on it. I, I don't know how to do that. Yours is in the green, correct? Yeah. It says, yeah. I mean, you used some of it. Hard back to jail. Some of it was Sam. Some of it was mine. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I'll, um, uh, Noah, can you enable screen share? Oh, look, this is it. Yes, it should be on now. Okay, can you see that? Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll grab it for you. You got this. Uh, people see that? I Maybe not. So this is the, um, this is the one that Lois, I think you had where it's, um, this is the one you've got yeah. that. The, yeah. fir the first paragraph, which sort of incorporates what Josie was talking about. Yeah, the first, well, yeah. there's the fir very first like opening statement, and then there's the relocate, reallocation money, which is similar to what, uh, it's, it's 300,000 of the 699 blah, 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 cut and do that. Can people see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I can't remember. I can never remember. What's the category? Something about replenishing the parking. Yeah, it's the, ticket? it's the, uh, well, the mayor had said from the beginning when, when the discussion of cutting the budget came up that he was going to let it go into what's called the stabilization fund. Uh, and that's kind of the general funds um, savings account, if you will. Uh, so that's what he did. So the three hundred thousand dollars came out of that savings account. It wasn't specific to the to the cut, but the cut was let to run into that money. So uh, I think I think the um, the right thing to call it is is the general the the city's general fund. Um, Michael, do you you know how much? money in general it's that that general fund i like don't total, uh, i don't both for and after the added seven hundred thousand, nearly it's it's an awful lot because okay. I, I think it's like 20 percent of the of the general budget so I, I believe it's up you know up over 10 million anyways mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that the thing that it, the thing that i mean this to me is like the most crucial thing that people thought that the money that was being cut was going to be used not to go into the general fund. And the fact that it did put $300,000 into the general fund and that this other money is sitting there, like almost, you know, what, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, like six or six, seven months after the you know, people thought that where this money was going is, I think people will find this, I mean, not necessarily people on the commission, but other people, I think, especially the people that testified, however many hundreds there were, that this is what happened to the money. Mm -hmm. I think, and that the other thing that is that that this is like a horrible, horrible precedent for any money that's cut in the future. If we just cut the money and, or the city cuts the money and then it just goes into whatever fund that the mayor decides it wants to go, then it's, you know, part of the point of cutting the money isn't just to cut the police, it's to cut the money for the police and to allocate it to better services. Right. It's it's less of a cut and me of a more of a reallocation. Right. But when you just cut it like this and it goes into a general fund to be used for anything, then it does kind of give off the appearance that what we're doing is um kind of what's, punitive. What's, 
yeah, what's the point? I mean, right. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't I, agree more. I mean, it's, to me, it's shocking that he decided to do this. And just, I mean, just really horrible. And it hasn't gotten any publicity at all. And I mean, there's been nothing in the paper about this, nothing. And Something, I, sorry. Anyway, I, I just, this is, it just really, I find this, I think people would be really, really, really surprised to learn that this is what happened, that half of it is unspent and then half of it has gone to basically a general fund. Right. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I mean, well, that's what I'm trying to get at in this in this paragraph. Uh, and, and the then, city has the city has the money, the other three hundred thousand you know, he pulled that out of the same fund. And again, that's a huge pot of money that he's pulled out of there to offset a, a, a problem with income, uh, with revenue. So the, the city has that money um, that was that was deleted from the budget uh, there. For, and, and again, he, he said he wasn't going to necessarily reallocate it uh, right away. He wanted this commission to make, make his plan for him. And so I, I think what you've written here is really compelling because it, it you know, it talks about the fact that there is this money available, uh, yeah. and and here are here are the ideas. So I think I think what you've written here is really good. Exactly what so, the, what the discussion was in June. So something that I think absolutely needs to make this this uh, preliminary progress report, whatever we want to call it, um, is that if there is this general fund, it does have X amount of dollars. If the amount supersedes or like uh, is is in excess of the original cut from the police department, then that much six hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred fifty seven should be pulled from the general fund and put into its own pool of money because otherwise we are working with a kind of liquid number, right? If we're working with the notion that the ten percent is uh, for us to kind of chew, like mentally chew on and come up with a recommendation, then all that work is for naught when that when the when that number is fluctuating. Right. Yeah. If we're working with this notion that we're working with 10% of the uh, of the police budget that has already been cut and reallocating that money to social services, yeah. then we are now not able to do the task that is charged with us if that number continues to fluctuate. And so those funds need to go back and that yes. the total amount, the original percent yes. needs to be yes. cut we should change from it. the, the right. portable right. general right. fund You're right. and put it uh, to its own full money for permission to be able to do it properly. We, okay, so maybe we should say in the short term, we believe that the remain that the remain 369,000 blah, 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 um, as well as Uh, whatever it is, 300,000. We, we, we can just say that the, we believe that the remaining 369,357 dollars, as well as the funds already used. Oh, not used, but allocated, as well as the 300,000 allocated to the general fund. Be alloc allocated now to initiatives. Now go forward. Forming shelters, blah 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 blah. You know the week the week before the two weeks before this budget cut, the mayor revised the budget to reduce his proposal by two hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Before that. So, I mean, what you're talking about there is, I mean, if you added that 212 into the 669, it is a huge amount of money that, that was originally intended for, for the police department. And, you know, in response to, to what people were, were asking for, you know, the, the cut wasn't just the 669, it was also the 212. The mayor cut that out before the city council voted on it. 
Okay. So, uh, so there's a lot of money. That, I mean, if you wanted to add that in, it, it would be, you know, kind of a the point that. being where, how where impactful that, add is. that. Maybe that's 669. We can add that. Just say uh, to the general fund. Okay. The general fund additionally. Um, what is it, Michael? 200 and um, what? Let me, yeah, uh, let me make sure I have the number right. $212,645. $212,645. What is it? Uh, that was. If you recall, when the when the budget was first proposed, um, the 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 police department was supposed to have an increase of one hundred and ninety three thousand, and there was outcry to level fund the police department, and the mayor came back and said, you know, he would pull that one hundred and ninety three thousand dollar increase, and there was also another nineteen thousand, and that's just how the numbers worked when he pulled the cars and and some other uh, cars, stuff. yeah. So the, it was it was a two hundred and twelve thousand dollar cut in total uh, that he made, and then again, the, then the 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 council did um, did cut the other six sixty nine. So it actually comes to a total of like eight hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. That was reduced from the NPD. Okay, for a total of. Oh, I have that number. What's the total amount? Um, I have it here. Hold on, six, six, nine, eight, 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 eight two. Eight eight two, comma six zero two. Six zero two. Can people see what I'm writing here? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Like almost a million dollars. An awful lot. That's brilliant. Josie, your example that when we were talking about um, sanitation facilities. Uh, public bathrooms. We were talking about that last time. You, I hadn't even thought about what you had said about if someone was urinating outside, they would be subjected to to policing, and and it did that part hadn't even occurred to me outside of just giving people a place to to safely use the bathroom. And then I, yeah. when you start throwing that other part into it, boy, I, I I I that really spun around in my head for a long time. Yeah. I mean, maybe we should say towards warming shelters, temporary shelters. Like, you know, like I've seen all of these things now, like of these little, I don't, not tents, but like these little dome things that people are putting up in other cities for people that are unhoused. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the city is investing some in the, uh, in the new shelter at the first churches. I don't, I'm not really clear about how much. That's um, different. Mm -hmm. It's a little yeah. different, yeah. Yeah, because 40, 41 beds. Yeah, and, and that, is, it, is it dry? Is it dry? Uh, as far as I know, it's um, they won't turn someone away who has already used used substances, but they cannot bring them in with them. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's so. Like it's it's not the worst case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also still gonna that's gonna, you know, maybe affect people's ability or, or their thought process when they're going into those spaces. But maybe, you know, maybe we should say a warming shelter, temporary shelter. So the, the other thing that I was reading is uh 
like a place for people to lock their stuff during the day so that people don't have to be dragging their stuff around with them all day long. Yeah. You know? So, so much of this is, is part of this, this plan that, that the mayor has developed for a resiliency hub, yeah. you know, having, having lockers, having shower wow. facilities and, and sanitation facility, bathroom facilities uh, and warming shelter. Uh, so much of this is kind of wrapped up into that, but, but we're not there yet. And we're here, know, we, are but in the meantime, here we are in winter. Or, yeah. Right. But yeah, I might, not, I might take out downtown shelter. area. We add temporary shelters and lockers. Oh, I think that's great. So that people, I mean, I don't know, like let them open up a place and get some old gym lockers and give people locks and let them use lockers. Mm -hmm. But uh, real quick, back to the the public restroom point that you brought up, Michael. It it, it really gets to the heart of uh, what portion of everyday existence in our society have become kind of criminalized. And it, it, it really does seep in different, uh, into different levels and it's very pervasive in a lot of ways. Um, I've learned recently that the very notion of like things becoming codified into law in order to make the everyday lives of say whiteness more possible. And one really clear example of this is uh, like the 4th of July, right? For the most part, fireworks are pretty illegal in the United States, except for in certain municipalities during the 4th of July to celebrate independence. However, that same right to celebrate with the use of fireworks is not then extended to people who are celebrating Juneteenth, who are also, uh, you know, celebrating what's like a moment of independence for a group of black people uh, in America, right? And so there's all these things that are cultural and, you know, part of the everyday going on of like being white, for example, that have been allowed to be, be legal, essentially, while other actions are either criminalized or are actively legislated against. Um, we see these as the impact of a lot of laws in the United States, uh, even though they're not you know, blatantly or explicitly racist, their impact tends to have uh, racist outcomes, uh, yeah. such as the police, which is what we're, you know, yeah. uh, discussing. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if there's no place, if there's no place to pee and you pee outdoors, then that's, you know, you can be cited for that, you know? And yeah. Right. So, and yeah, I mean, so that's, If, if I could make a suggestion to that line at the end, Lois, um, you know, you say uh, meeting public sanitation needs for people who are unhoused and living in the downtown area. I might just change that to downtown area to just Northampton. Yeah. Um, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. People are not just living downtown. That's part of it. People are living out in the woods still. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I love the next part about we believe that this is what was called for because I think that's 100% correct. This is exactly what people were asking for, you know, was an investment <clears throat> in the well being of people that need more investment. Yes. Uh, in my version of this first paragraph, I, I changed it from we believe to to just this is what was called for, right? It, oh, it kind of yeah. makes it more active. Right. Uh, instead of passive. Can you change it on there, Josie? Are you, can you change it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can, I can change it. Oh, we believe, oh, you're saying this investment is what was called for. This, yes, this kind of investment is what was called for. Okay. This is the phrasing I used. Sure. Uh, there, there are definitely uses uh, for passive voice, uh, yeah, but... Yeah. More I more agree. often than I not, agree. I found that active voice is a lot better. I agree. I agree. I took some of those out too myself. So. Also, uh, Noah, is my audio better now that I switched over to phone? Yeah, it's a lot better. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
we go on to number two? I just tried scrolling on the share screen, the shared screen is about to the document. I don't know why. I I just I just don't understand what happens here, but uh, so you all are not looking at the actual I don't know what you're looking at. I, I have the actual document pulled up in the background and so I pull away from the zoom to type in it, look at it, but I'm also looking at the version that is being shared to us. Okay. Oh, maybe that's, oh, I see. I was going to say, so I, I, think this, I don't get it, but anyway, okay. My screen, my screen only allows me to see one at a time. It's too small. But, okay, but where's the one that I just had? Because that's the one I can't see. I, did, I, just, I, I just sent it to you, Lois. That's the, the version that we're looking uh, like the actual version that you can type on. Um, yeah, that's what I thought I had, was typing on. So if you went to paragraph two right now, I think, and you were to yeah. type in um, something, we would see it pop up. Okay. But, uh, oh. I think. Okay. Oh, you know what? I sent you the wrong one. I'm so sorry. I sent you the wrong one. It's too confusing. I can stop sharing if everyone's okay with working. I so confused. I just can't even begin to tell you. Uh, I made it worse by sending you the wrong document. Here's the right <laughs> document. <laughs> For example, if I were to type hi. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So should we move on to number two? Yeah. Um, I think after listening to the other departments, or it's, good lord, after listening <laughs> to the other subcommittees <laughs> that are not departments, yeah. um, uh, I think they were all pretty hesitant to make stronger, like to make, to come out and say they wanted like a new department. I think it was more proposals. So I think at this point, just for the preliminary report, I think we should probably maybe move. I, I think keeping the, the first one, the recommendation for allocating the money, I think that one's that can stay. Um, but this this one where we're just talking about, like we're recommending that they go towards creating a new department, I think we should maybe change this into um, we are exploring. OK. Just to to oh. to get it away from that recommendation and more to okay because this isn't something that the whole commission has agreed on yet. Right, um, but I mean, this is the thing that I don't understand. I mean, so everybody's every committee is writing their own thing, mm -hmm. and and I mean, in an odd way. What I'm thinking at this point is, is that rather than, I mean, in order for each committee to come up, each, for all of the committees come up with a unified document, there's going to have to be a lot of negotiation of these three documents. Mm -hmm. because, right. Because we're going to come up, we're just saying things that I think I mean, just going by some of these other committees that meetings that I've attended that are, let's say, not necessarily in sync with some of the other committees. So when we propose something like this as our document, um, we could have some people that think, uh-uh, you know, I mean, this isn't what the committee what they think the commission should be recommending or even proposing or even exploring. And so how are, I mean, it's one thing for us to come to agreement about this document. I mean, you know, our, our little group here, but then mm -hmm. what's going to happen? I mean, it almost, I mean, that's, that's my question. How is that possibly going to happen? Because we are going to not be, there, there isn't going to be consensus about some of these things. 
I mean, maybe there will be. Maybe I'll be surprised. But um, anyway, I just don't see how this is going to happen. I mean, unless it's just like, okay, there's an opening paragraph, and then this is the report from this committee, <laughs> and this is the report from that committee, and this yeah. is the report from the other committee, and that's where we're each at now, you know, and we don't have consensus, and we're yeah. not going to have it in the next week. Yeah, that's exactly, that. that's sort of how I see this going, just because I don't think there is, uh, I don't think there, I don't think it's possible for us to have consensus on all of these things when we are still exploring even what they are. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're still, I mean, we're still grasping sort of in the dark because we don't have information that we've requested. We aren't the only ones that don't have that yet. And, you know, that's not, you know, that's not knocking the police department out, but, you know, they've got dozens of requests, you know, yeah. in, in the yeah. right. a lot of information that has to come there, but because we don't have that information, so we can't even formulate really, I mean, we, we can say, well, we kind of understand a little bit about what's happening, but even beyond that, we, we still don't know. There's a lot that's empty. And I don't think that we can have consensus in what that is, like what we want to recommend fully. Uh, I, I, we can't even really bring it up to a full discussion because we don't know all of the, all of the Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, so, it's gonna take a long time for, uh, this for all these different people to come to some kind of consensus at the end about what the recommendations are going to be. So I think I, I, I see where you're coming from, Dan, because you're right, we don't have there's so much information that we do have. But I think us as the spending and contracts subcommittee puts us in a very unique position, right? Uh, because we are kind of like the foothold in terms of the financing. On, on the whole thing, I think we stand in a very particular position where we're, I think we're obligated to take the most radical stance and not only to make sure that that conversation remains on the table, but because in order to say fund any alternatives, uh, to fund the, the, the creation of a new department that are actually held accountable means that there are needs to be a continual or a big push for either a lot to be defunded from the police and reallocated to these services or a plan to slowly defund the police over a set number of years, uh, to, again, to, to fund these things. So I think our place at the table is by making sure that this, um, this like really uh, loose kind of, you know, uh, perspective stays uh, really pertinent. Because I think you're right. I think we'll never reach consensus. And for that reason, we shouldn't kind of buckle and be like, we're just thinking about it because we need to be thinking about um, this larger picture and the, the actual money that's going to be required in order to make it happen. Well, yeah, anyway, yeah. So, I'm oh, good. So you're changing this around, which is good, Dan. Right, I mean, the, the yeah, the, I mean, it looks to me like you know, paragraph one is basically, this is something we would like to see happen immediately. Yeah. And paragraph two mm -hmm. is, um, yeah. you know, this is how we can pay for uh, for ideas that the four of us have, but also ideas that may come from uh, alternatives, uh, yeah, you know, the alternative yeah. subcommittee. There is, there is money here and this is how, this is where the money can come from and this is what it can go to. Mm -hmm. So well, I, think I don't think good. we want to say the same fundraising mechanics because right. <laughs> same, I don't think we want to say that because like the fundraising mechanics of the arts council is like putting on concerts and first night and all of that. So, uh, I mean, that's how they generate most of their money. Uh, right. Just maybe you could just, this could also apply for grants. I, I maybe we can just use, uh, the Arts Council as a model for a, a, a part of the city that has, a, has an outside, um, well, I mean, it's weird because it's called the Arts Council and the body that regulates it is the Arts Council. <laughs> so it's a little, right. you know what I mean? The people on that serve as to recommend money are members of the Arts Council and also partners of the Arts Council. So it's a little 
uh, but anyway, the department could also apply for grants using a similar not funding model. That I think is not right. I mean, do we want to just say using a similar using, model? Uh, uh, yeah, using, using a similar distribution maybe model. Right? Just use, maybe you could just say using the Arts Council as a precedent or as a I don't know. Well, maybe just say as a model, but not a funding model. <laughs> we, we're, we're not going to be putting on, I don't think, you know, Young at Heart Chorus or anything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, several resources from within the current policing practice. Wait, wait, don't, wait a second. I think there's been another category. I think I have that. Hmm. There's some place I wrote, not the money, but funding opportunities. In the funds generated. Oh, if you look at the bottom there, if you scroll all the way down, it says recommendations, or maybe we could change like ideas under consideration. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, we're doing it at the same time here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we can work a lot of these back at, into. Yeah. Um, the thing that the thing about the million dollars, uh, in mine, what I recommended, uh, okay, I thought I recommended. Um, money a percentage. I actually kind of think all of those would just fit right into that. The thing is, we're not saying we want, I mean, they're never going to agree. I mean, I mean, maybe we can say it, but I mean, they're not going to, no, nope, the city isn't going to agree to taking a million dollars from the some of the, the the detail, the million dollars of detail, some of that, half of it goes to the police. And half of it, at least my understanding, it goes to the city. So I thought I thought the that the million dollars was the was the profit after the police were paid. Because they were paid 1.2. And I think the 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 math that I had did uh, come out with uh, was that the the entire process generated 2.2 and the officers were paid 1.2 leaving a million that went into the general fund that's what the police chief's note what was oh. extra went into the general fund then we definitely need to put that in there <laughs> and I think that's I mean that's active Maybe money that could be used for so for much that, good Yeah, maybe in that first one, it says a profit. I don't know what you want to call it, profit. Maybe. I think that's pretty good. I don't know. A percent, that's not 
So I don't know what you want to say here, but provocative is a funny word to use for that. Mm. I mean, maybe you could just say a percentage of the roughly $1 million of funds generated or funds that, yeah. Nobody's going to call it profit. Yeah, I think I think I did, and, and that stuck to it a little bit, but that's not exactly true. Not exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not running up business. I mean, I mean, I guess like, what what would make it not profit? I guess is because the way well, I'm looking at it is, profit. is there an incentive? Is there? Yeah. Is is there, isn't there an incentive for police officers to then like you know pull out, like is there like a quota system? uh Oof. in order to generate the funds needed for yeah. uh the police officer you know it's yeah it is and then who, but it's just not and then the who's paying profit, the word profit it's, it's not a you know a, a mystical word <laughs> that's all i think I mean, it's nice it is, but I, i'm just you know i think it'd be nice to think of our you know governments and municipalities functioning not as businesses all the time but there, i mean there are aspects of it that are business-like yeah, and also you have to ask the question like where are those profits coming from uh and who's getting pulled over or the tickets that create profits yeah, or all yeah, asset yeah. forfeiture I, I, agree. I agree i agree i agree i agree i mean like uh which which communities are most impacted by police presence and then you see that oh so not only are tax rates the way that they are now, but also low-income individuals are then being held up by police, and that money is then like going into a general fund to then benefit all of Northampton. But yeah. some of it is coming from police actions, and those police actions again are impacting low-income people. So it's really like poor people are paying Absolutely. double double tax. Absolutely, um, I mean, you're right. You're right. Uh, I, I think you and maybe. Maybe there's good sources from within, within current policing practices. But, uh, you're, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, and, and you're right. I mean, it's like, I mean, the thing that comes to mind, it's not exactly the same thing, but if you think of uh, people uh, who are incarcerated and they have to pay the absolutely exorbitant rate for telephones to use the telephone or to use and who pays for that you know the mm -hmm. the sheriff are the ones that benefit from that they all get kickbacks and but the money that is being paid is by the family members or loved ones of the people who are incarcerated and mm -hmm. So on the, the sheriffs are getting money from the state to run their jails. And then on top of it, they're getting money supposedly to run programs paid for by the very people, the family members of the very people that are locked up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of, I mean, in a way, it's just what you're saying. It's a similar kind of thing. I mean, they're, they're both, they're being exploited, uh, by policing and then the money isn't even coming back to them in any way. They're paying for it in a lot of ways and they're not benefiting from it in any way. And in fact, they're not right. benefiting from it. They're being criminalized by it. So, I mean, I, right. I, 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 I get what you're saying. Um, right. I, I would say, would you have a percentage of the funds generated from civil asset forfeiture I don't know whether I said a percentage, but I would just leave it at funds generated from civil asset forfeiture because that's directly related to, I mean, so is police detail. So, is, I mean, in that way, so. Is yeah, I was just, I was just making traffic. the same, but. But, I mean, this is like a particular kind of money. And for the life of me, I could not, I tried to find what, I know I saw the amount of money someplace, but I, I couldn't, I looked through all of these things and I couldn't find where the hell it is. I tried to look, find it in 
you know, the city revenue, but I, I couldn't find it. No, uh, it was in its own document. It would be great if we could find it just to give people an idea of how much money that is. It's not a ton of money, but it's money. Was that the one that was like some years it was more than others? It was like. Yeah, it was like 70,000 and then like 20,000 and then like over 100. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of I know. Odd. It's like a range. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we can just leave it at that then because it's so variable. I guess it depends mm -hmm. on. You know. Yeah, I think it, I, th I think we run into trouble. Like, I mean, well, I, I'm fine with leaving it like that. I think it's good. Okay. Uh, it, oh, this is. So I just number three. I was trying to say, you know, like let's not leave out that there'll be some kind of yearly reduction from for the NPD. And I don't know what, you know, I don't know what, I'm not, I'm not saying, I wasn't saying that it would be a certain amount, but that it will, that that's something that. Should these be uh, lettered since they're under a number? Um, yeah, I mean, I that... of just of an outline. Yeah, when I was actually like putting together more stuff, I was actually taking out the numbers and just having it be like a like a section. A section. But yeah, cool. you can also letter these. It's not that hard. Can I find? I mean the the SRO. I don't think that's going to come back. Uh, I sure hope not. Uh, firstly, as someone who works in schooling and has done enough reading and seen the firsthand impact of the yeah, school-to-prison pipeline, um, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, there, yeah, I, there was a that's... huge, you know, discussion and vote in the school committee about that, and and there is a whole separate committee that's advocating for the end of it, and I, I just be really surprised if that came back. Yeah, I think we even discussed Whoa. that. Yeah, that, that this is, uh, you know, that you have to kind of file for a waiver with the state not to have an SRO, but it seems like that program may be going away too, that it may be. Yeah, if the, yeah, just, I, yeah, if I think Northampton's headed in that if direction. If the police <laughs> thing ever passes, that, that's part of it, that the people, right. will, the cities won't have to apply for the waiver. Right. What, what would really help is more funding to public education in general in order to include things like, uh, you know, trauma counseling and other social services that children need, um, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I mean, that was... I don't know, just a, just a thought. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was nice. The one person... Uh, okay, and then this was something I just put in there just because... Uh, oh, now they're A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, E, I put in two. The addition, yeah, additional NPD staffing. I just want to throw that in there. Because if people are talking about that, it'll have it'll have a budget consequence. I'm not sure what the difference between C and E are. Between what? The C, where we have the yearly reductions to NPD, a safety responsibilities move to services and program staffed by non armed community based. Well, maybe, maybe we should just say, for example, and then yeah. get rid of E. Or, 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 you know, put those two together. No, oh, I like that. but are not limited to.
Not me. Just me. I don't know how you want to say that. I put in, but I think it should be ended. Routine purchase. Oh, that's good. That's a lot of money every year. That's like thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Okay, very good. basically what we had before. Yeah. This was what we had before. I think I think this is good and it's got us you know pretty pretty clear on where we're looking at where money can come from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cuz there's there's a lot and I mean I you know we even say it already says, but not limited to up here as well, because there will probably be more. And you know, I know that different um, uh, different subcommittees are looking at different things. So, like, if we, you know, if detail work was no longer housed just within the police department, because um, it could be some, it could be unarmed staff that are doing it, but the detail work is still going to happen. But and that means that the city is still going to get funds <laughs> from there. I doubt that anyone in the city is going to say like, "Oh no, we don't need that money." Oh, <laughs> if you're right, if you were paying right, right, if, right. if the city's charging fifty-one dollars an hour, and the average police officer is making twenty-nine, if the unarmed person was making twenty, the city was going to make a larger profit on it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you know, look, and, uh, sorry, go ahead, Dan. I was gonna say, like, I mean, some of those things, like the the traffic detail, like having somebody there that can direct traffic is is relative. Like, that's like not gonna disappear, right? Now, who needs to direct traffic? Do they need to have a weapon on them? Do they need to be a police officer? I'm gonna say no. I don't think I've ever seen or heard of an instance <laughs> where that was really right. Scary. Um, but also, I'm oh, sorry. The city will still have to pay for people to do it, they just won't be paying. I mean, they're, 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 there will still need to be traffic control. There'll still need to be people, you know, directing traffic over, you know, work sites and trees being cut down and all that. But and, and just, that, of course. so it will still have to be the detail. I mean, the people will still have to pay for it. And it's true, the city could end up making more money or more money could be generated from it if people were being paid $25 an hour or even $30 an hour. Right. And then also, does it, does, does it make anyone else kind of uneasy that like we've existed in the system or like these like local shops or the corporations or whatever it could be could just pay for police detail and then standing outside of these places, like establishments, there's just armed personnel who could take your life with no impunity uh, while you shop. It's kind of like a weird thing to like kind of wrestle with. I mean, that's yeah. actually, that, that is pretty much the way that police started in, in the Northeast. Right. Uh, was, yeah. <laughs> was merchants having private security detail and they convinced the cities that you should pay for our security because we bring Pinkertons, right? And it was exactly that. It was pretty much a racket for people who were basically. <laughs> and that's why, like, the first police departments that were established um, in Pennsylvania, the very first ones, it's like 1860 something, forget the exact year, but like people protested and went, This is a terrible idea. Why would you give these people this power? We don't want it. <laughs> like, right. You know, so when we think about like you know, that, that exactly is the. That's the setup that it's been. It's changed. Right. 
but that's <laughs> that is a unique yeah. <laughs> a unique phenomenon. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then you have things like Pinkerton, um, mm -hmm. strike breakers. Yeah, police, but police. I mean, they weren't. They were the ones that were protecting the strike breakers. You know, they were private, private police army coming in to protect strike breakers. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you still see Pinkerton. I mean, that company still exists. I mean, if you go to department stores or something. They're, they're Pinkerton, you know, bar. So, I mean, Pinkerton still is there. Okay. Uh, okay. We need more than this. We just go to number four. Yeah, uh, three. Yeah, number three. Um, so yeah, Dan, Dan is this your most recent version? No, oh. this this I will. Um, I liked I liked your version when I when I read it earlier today. I thought it was really good. Oh, I, I, I haven't seen that. I haven't well. seen that. Yeah, okay, this me? is where you start in, Dan. Yeah. So give okay. me one second, and I will copy and paste those changes over. Maybe where is that? Yeah, I haven't I haven't read those yet. Those are all the pie charts and stuff. Yeah, number three is going to take a little work, um, just in terms of like, I realized like because I was adding things and then realized that it probably makes sense to put some of them in other places. Um, so, oops. there's a. Okay. We can start at the top just so that it's <laughs> it's there. Um, so. <clears throat> I mean, like the first two probably need to smash together. Um, but um, so the police officers represent the majority of the highest paid city employees, including money making mayor, the city. So this is sort of related, um, but routinely pay $250,000 or more in overtime pay per year, and officers receive thousands of dollars, sometimes upwards of $10,000 in pay for police detail work. This represents in the most extreme an individual working you know, 5,277 hours a year over 100 hours a week. Put another way, the average salary is $59,000 and ranged from Yeah. Um, That's good. And then, then you added this. Um, yeah. So police de uh, the police department is about 33% um, of city employees who make more than $85,000 a year broken up on this little pie chart, pie chart here. <laughs> um, uh, it's also um, of the 20 highest paid city employees, police are 39% of them. Right. Police officers are four out of the five highest paid employees of the city. <laughs> right. With the highest being paid 184,000 Three hundred and seventy-two dollars. Um, this is a concern when you look across trend, when you look at the trends across years and consider what investments the city's making and what we say our values are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If we're looking at a budget right. value statement, because it is where you direct where you direct funds is what you consider important. This is a little concerning. I also just jumped over to open um, open payroll, um, and so when I looked up, <laughs> so it, it goes. By to the employee. This Northampton Public. Is this the public school? What is it made public? Oh, yep. Sorry. That should be Northampton Public Schools. But I think it gets cut off because it's like the auto. Oh, oh, okay. On the graph. But Can I just put public schools or schools or something. Can I edit in here? Nope. All right. Let me jump. Northampton Schools so that. Yeah. On the. Like our NPS. Yeah, something. Let's see if that comes up and we can update this. Can I update you yet? Nope, okay. It's gonna take a second. Eventually it'll update. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> give me the option. For context, open trails are already showing employment of an officer that works for the city of Um. So I just copied <laughs> what the open payroll system had. Because um, it then compares across um, the city and across. Um, okay. so, the open 
payroll so I can record show the employment of an officer that works for the city of New York in Massachusetts. You know, 160.8% higher than the national average for government employees. That's wild. How many teachers doing that, are doing that? Yeah. <laughs> right. A teacher wants to bump up their income so they coach the baseball team and they make an extra 2500 bucks. Yeah, I was going to say. For real. <laughs> One of my friends is teaching. I'm like. And took over doing like the yearbook and doing like photographing like all of like the sports teams and stuff. She's like, yeah, it's like two thousand dollars. Like what? <laughs> You're doing half for, for only an extra only an extra ten hours of work every single week too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Um, exactly what I think. This is exactly what I hope to see. It's. Like there's some context that we do have to add in these and that the gross income also includes detail pay in at least mm -hmm. one of the examples. Um, so, you know, there is that. I also put an officer because it does, you can have people by their name. So I just think the highest paid officer in Northampton. <laughs> um, yeah. I didn't feel like it was important to, to say that like, I didn't want it to be like a personal individual attack. It's like, I'm just, just going after the the, yeah. fund, the salary total. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what's important. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not names, so I did want to avoid that. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. The other. Um, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. Um. Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't copy over the comments. Okay. Um. So the other part that I had. Um. So just the North. The Northampton Police Department's increased 24% over the past five years, 41% um, it's 40.9 something percent over the past 10 years. This in dollar amounts is almost $2 million. I can get, I can grab the exact difference, like 1.82 something. Um, yeah, do, 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 whoops, wrong spreadsheet. I have like a thousand different <laughs> spreadsheets open. How do you how do you even justify forty one percent increase in ten years? Right? Where like where where's the justification? Is it like did crime decrease in forty by forty one percent and like and I, like it did it didn't you know? Yeah, but I think I, I obviously I mean there is I mean this I'll say it again I can't stop saying it there really isn't any crime in Northampton but all right uh but it's I think it's because they kept increasing the number of police, which meant that they kept increasing the number of salaries, they kept increasing the number of over amount of overtime, they kept increasing uh, the amount of cars that they need, they kept increasing uh, whatever the cost of living increases for all the additional people. So the more people right. that you have, the more it costs. I mean, and everybody yeah. gets the cost of living increase, but then there are more of them, and so, that's that's what what drives it so that you end up with you know i mean the idea I, I, you know that that's but why i mean the because, but, but, because it, there's this idea that i mean this, this, I, it's the same idea like well why do you need five new police cars every year well because we need right police cars every year well why do you need uh, two or three more um, police officers a year because we we need five, three or four more police officers because there's never been, as far as I can get, any real um, demand for accountability of these kinds of increases. It's not right. It's not based on crime. No, the right. only thing they say it's based on it's they can't say that it's based on crime because there really isn't any crime. So the only thing that they can say is that all of this um, creates a crime crime prevention. You know, so <laughs> having having a police car sitting on King Street for hours or sometimes two police cars sitting on King Street in that big 
open space. I mean, that's where I see them all the time. Uh, is, in that giant lot where the trucks are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that yeah, is yeah. For, to, to have, you know, like to slow people down, make sure they stop at lights. That's why, that's why they say they're there. And also in case there's some something that they have to respond to that they need to have however many people there are stationed all around the city at any given point in time so that they can get to wherever an accident is or whatever it is that the, you know, I mean, I saw this thing on Facebook today about, cause I, uh, I, you know, like the NTV Facebook page, you know, and, you know, two horses got out somewhere. Know. and so <laughs> at night so they went and got the horses you know so they were stationed and ready to do this and this was posted on you know this is policing in Northampton right but 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 by that same logic like I would personally want ambulances on every corner for when I have a heart attack you know but we don't we don't do that we do yeah. it only for crime where where they're reactionary anyways after harm has already been done and what difference in that horse's case does it matter if the police leave from the police station versus a few streets over? It just, we pay for so much because it's an institution that just hasn't been challenged for hundreds of years. Absolutely. And it's a money sink that we put so much money into and justify continuing to do so because undoing it all is like saying that all that work we've done over the past hundred years has been for naught. And it has been for naught because we see year after year through empirical data that policing hurts. It hurts communities. And communities that are strong, communities who have their needs met, require less and less policing. That's why there's so little crime in Northampton and why Northampton has a higher uh, medium household income than, like, say, other areas, right? Yeah. I mean, everything is connected. I mean, I think it's important to think, like, to think about these where we're saying, like, it's increased 41% over the past 10 years. A lot of that is coming from, it's, and I think this is, it's just tradition to give them more money, right? It's, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And right. so but tradition yeah, in and of itself is not something of value, right? You uh, you you make tradition worth something. But, but I think what's but important is all you have to do. I mean, I, I keep using these different examples because these are the examples that I know. The sheriffs, they never I mean, it doesn't matter that they have fewer people locked up. It doesn't matter that their budgets are completely I mean, in Massachusetts, there's 7,000 people in jail, and it's the budget for jails in, in Massachusetts is over half a billion dollars to lock up 7,000 people, and most of them are <laughs> And when they go in front of the, um, when they put in their budgets and they go to these hearings, I mean, I've sat in these hearings. Basically, when the sheriffs walk in, there's there's this adulation. There's everything but somebody like throwing rose petals, at, you know, at their feet as they walk down the aisle to testify. And nobody ever says to them, nobody, why, you know, what do you need? Why are you, why do you have this kind of money? What are you doing with it? You know, the numbers are going down. And nonetheless, every year they come back and they ask for more money and they get it. Yeah. And, and I mean, I've seen this for decades. So the, the reason the that I was... exact thing with the police. Exactly. It's the same construct as the police. Yeah. And so the, the reason that I wanted to say like that it's been like this small sort of creep is that there's been no sort of prove to us what you're doing helps. Um, and so like, right. <laughs> like, the, crime rate, the crime rate is decreasing for Northampton up at pretty much the same rate that it is across the country. And there's significant research. So I grabbed two different articles. <laughs> um, one, uh, one is from 1975, the other one's from 2014, but they both show the same thing in slightly different ways. Um, but this is something that we've known since, you know, or for at least, you know, at I mean, there's all the research shows that more people that you lock up and the more people that are incarcerated and then released from prison, 
the more destructive it is to communities, the more crime goes up, there, the, the relationship between incarceration and crime, if there's any relationship, is that more incarceration, more incarceration causes the deterioration of communities and increases crime. I mean, you can look it up. And that is just the reality. Um, I just wanted to include that in this, like, to say like, the police, the police budget's gone up, the crime rate has gone down, but those two things, just because they're correlated, but there's not causation. No, they're here. never correlated. Um, so I just want to make sure that they're not, that, that, that we're, we're saying this isn't the cause, like. Absolutely, the, they are not. If anything, it's the opposite. Cause. So I just wanted to have that in there, but just to explain that paragraph. Um, the budget's going up. <laughs> increased police budgets are not responsible. I mean, they are not the causation or something for decreased crime. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is just terminology 101 now. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it really is. I just wanted to make sure that it's in there just so that for, for folks who don't know and they just get that sort of yes, yes. baseline that we should have it in there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I agree. I mean, because I agree. Okay, I agree. So uh, <laughs> there's that. The, um, this is the part that makes my blood boil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. Um, the, I should note that when I, I've asked for more information and I sent this graph over to um, yeah. his office um, that uh, the chief is off this week so we probably won't have anything um, yeah. a response anytime soon even when we do get it my guess is given the chief's previous responses that there's nothing that's going to be like an hourly breakdown which I don't necessarily expect but I'm hoping <laughs> since yeah. this will be for me this is but the, so little though reported in the call logs by by officers so the officers put in their time you know after they responded to a call um here it is and some of that um where it's cut short some of it is just not great reporting like or it's limitations by the system itself um in terms of getting that information back or, or getting that information in like but again you know the one thing i thought about this paragraph when i read it is now just now when you were saying what the limitations are because uh you say we've requested and we await the response the missing information is at least in part due to si the system use i can we say a little bit more about that because like what you were just saying because uh this is like a crucial thing that um, that that they that it, it it appears that there actually isn't a way to track um, all of the time that not just system use to log officer time. I mean that sounds like oh well we can just fix this and there'll be a way to log officer time, but the system itself is not set up to do that it's it's wild to me like using the paragraph before this one as as a reference that like over the course of 10 years policing budget has gone up 41 percent, and yet their their accountability like what they use for accountability what they use for timekeeping is so outdated that we can't even get an hour by hour breakdown where other normalized job prospects has like broken down by 15 minute chunks and sometimes even smaller than that, right? What is all the money going to and why is police accountability not at the top of things that should be funded so that we can actually have access to the information needed for this commission to do the right thing, right? Because when I look at this graph, I know nothing. There's so much left out and it's, 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 it's unthinkable that we've handed them 41% increase in their budget over the course of 10 years. 
and, and to be handed this. Maybe we could just say something like, I don't know, just to strengthen that 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 sentence. The information is it's such a like like it's not strong enough. The truth that. The missing information is at least in part due to the system used to log officers, which maybe which which maybe we can just say which results in a lack of accountability for the thousands of hours of police time a year or something like that. Just put the word Traffic accountability enforcement. in there. Traffic enforcement point three, that's one hour a week. I mean one hour a day. <laughs> I mean the 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 whole th I mean if we go back to uh, I mean and this is the thing is that that log is that, so the chief sent an email and I think I forward or you know, I think yeah. I got along like with with her response that was um, you know basically um, we can't give you this information because we don't have it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's also that, like, um, you know, if somebody, right, because I had specifically said, or we had specifically said, like, that some of these things, like, it says there's only a few minutes or even a few seconds, right? Crime scene services is reported as three seconds. Right, right. Um, all that is is one minute. Yeah. And but the response was. Um, that's something here. So, like, the response to that was that if officers are doing one thing uh so if they start it and then they say um if they get called to something else if they get but it doesn't they, say it there's nothing in the system that says um during a period of time let's say five hours or eight hours or whatever their shift is during the day or whatever their shift is at night where is the time that they are doing, that they're waiting for something to happen? So, uh, because it's about back to these call logs, like, well, what happens when they're not called? So that's, you know, uh, where, where are all, and those, that's where most of the hours are when they're not called. Yeah. So the chief said, mm -hmm. um, like an officer, I can I can read it where it says, um, every minute of an officer's time is not documented in the log. For example, the first 10 minutes of a shift are typically spent in shift change. The next 10 are spent checking emails, reviewing the call log. Right. And checking checking emails. Um, after that, an officer might check their response area and then may park in a visible location to slow traffic. Right, visible location. <laughs> to, right. Slow, to slow traffic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if, if that's the case, you could just put a, a cardboard cutout of a police cruiser there. But can't we just say something about, I understand what you're saying, but it's that the logs, the call logs, do not reflect the time that is spent by police during a they, given shift. They yeah, they also don't reflect what, what is... The, the, what we were speaking about a minute ago um, in return in terms of like why the budget has expanded is because to, to use what David Hoos has said, the footprint has expanded. So this expanded footprint includes what sitting and waiting for someone to speed by or sitting to slow traffic, which means you're not pulling anybody over. You're just there to discourage them from speeding. And, and you know, this is, it's all a combination of, of, of accountability and, and that's, Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to but read as a result. Maybe you could just say the missing information is at least in part due to uh, the system during officer time, which which does not count for the Yeah. Um, and to be officers. I mean, just something to say these logs don't, don't give us, I mean, the, what the logs give us is this graph. 
And maybe we can say this graph is reflective of that. What, what's wild to me is like, I know some of the technology that is, is that is in the hands of policing. For example, I, I know that there is like a, a speed radar that they have on their cars that allows them to see which one of the, the moving bodies in front of them is traveling the fastest, right? I worked for PVTA, for example, and we had uh, trackers on all the vehicles. So we knew exactly how fast someone was going, how long they were taking to go from point A to point B. Anytime there was an incident, I was a radio operator, you know, we would log that instantly. We put a time frame of how long the incident was. We'd get a report from both the, the bus driver and the person um, who we, we interacted with, right? And all that stuff is really nicely cataloged. And there are people at DVTA who can just pull that stuff up for you. Why is that same level of care that we have for public transportation and that's required for reporting purposes of public transportation? Why is it, why are the police not still like hold to at the very least that Scrutability of accountability. Asks them. The mm -hmm. answer is because nobody asks them. I think one important thing, you know, if we're if we're framing this, and part of the reason that I don't, I don't want to, and I think we've talked about this before, is like I don't want the solution to this to just be. Oh, I agree. I agree. Let's invest a million dollars in a new system. Yeah. Like, no. Exactly. No. Like accountability, can, like, I mean, we can frame a discussion about ac yeah. accountability uh, on its own. Right. I just wanted to say that we don't have all of the information that we'd like um, because the system that, that is, the, because of the call log reporting system, the IMSC, IMCC, IM something, I should know that the acronym of Reddit, IMC, there we go. Uh, the IMC logs, because, and it's not just the system, but it's how they're used, right? So like, the chief said, right. that, you know, somebody, will, like one of the officers will say, oh, just put that call through. Um, I forget what it, what it was, but it's like basically that it starts and stops at exactly the same time. Or it stops for like zero seconds. Um, right. There are a number of reasons why people would do that. And then no explanation, next sentence. <laughs> and so you're sort of left. Right. Like, well, but why? Like if this is. Um, if this is what you're doing. The other thing that we're waiting for um, is basically how do you determine staffing? Like, and your staffing needs. Right. Um, <laughs> so like, you know, <laughs> how do you know how many officers you need? Um, and that's sort of directly- well, clearly, or, you know, Sorry. I mean, that's sort of directly related sorry. to how do you staff uh, or how do you track your time or an officer's time, right? Like, you know, retail, uh, I, I can't think of many jobs where they're like, oh, well, we don't know how much time, you know, our employees use, so we just need more of them. Like, it, right. I, right. I don't, again, I, I the other thing that we say, Dan, we are optimistic that in coming months we will receive more information. Can we just say we look forward to receiving more information instead of optimistic? Yeah. <laughs> um. You get, get it really quick, just getting to your point, Dan. No, I think you're right. I don't want this to become a conversation of like, we need to keep pumping money to the police. I think what it's indicative of though, everything that we've seen here is like, despite putting in so much money in the police, it's clear that the, it's not a system that is capable of reform, you know, especially not through putting more money into it. We see time and time again, 41% over the course of 10 years, and this is all we get. It's, it's clearly a, a clear indication that the police department, as it stands right now, is a money sink, right? It's something that we continue to sink money into because it, we, it's just what we've done. And, and doing anything that rubs against that grain is indicative of, of the tradition of funding the policing as we've been funding it, as admitting that what we've been doing has not worked. And we've been doing it for so long. So it feels like uh, that we're losing something, but really... We lose more continuing the system the way that it is and not perhaps maybe starting from scratch. Yeah. So, I mean, once we get more information from the chief, hopefully we'll have, we can at least say something more about this. Even if we say this is a rough estimate, here's how much time they spend sitting and slowing traffic. Here's how much time they spend um, doing anything else that there's no, um, you know, in the actually, well, you know, some of this should be the, uh, 
And even if you took all of these calls and you said add an hour to all of them, which we can't do because we just have the time spent. It doesn't tell us how many calls because the, the police process is to also spend an hour in an area after a call. Um, but we don't know, <laughs> like, we don't know how many calls there actually were in these spaces. So you can't just add an hour, but that's going to be some chunk of this is police officer sits in car near the area. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, can we go on? Uh, our work will include producing deeper insight to the mechanisms which is expanded the role and cost of police and start establish guidelines and estimations of functionality costs. I, I, I don't even get what this means, but I think it's a little bit over the top. I mean, basically, our work um, is to understand how Northampton Police, like what the funding situation is now, what it has been historically, and why. Okay, and can we just say that instead of functionality costs for their associated responsibility? Yeah, we can. Many words. And maybe we can put in the word somewhere in this paragraph, uh, you know, and look forward to, under, to exploring avenues of increased accountability for funding decisions for the police. You could say insight instead of deeper insight. I don't even know what the deeper insight does. Maybe maybe we should say increase. Um, budgetary accountability. to the equitable and whatever. Super. And then. Understanding the budgets in the context will allow us to make recommendations that increase budgetary accountability and specific funding opportunities that the city can establish that the city can establish that the city can can establish alternatives and create or alternatives that foster community inclusion growth. We could say and create. Thank you. 
So, um, this might be, this might be me showing my ignorance, um, but then you've talked about, um, municipalities in the past, uh, doing some form of time audit. And I like know what an audit is and I know what the word time is. Uh, I just don't know those two words in that order. What does that look like? And like, when do you places do that and how much would it cost? These, I guess, like, you might not be the, the expert on this, but You've mentioned it, and I, I'm very interested in it because what, what would happen if, like, NPD, for example, got time audited, like, today? Well, I mean, time audits, like, how, how much it costs and how long it takes to do really depends on what type of audit you're doing and how big, like, the department is and what records they keep already. Um, but it basically is, um, it's a lot of doing like tracking how much time you actually spend on doing different things. Um, so if, if you already have a system in place that logs everything and you've been doing that, cool. Um, for some groups um, that do it, like um, something like some of the developers and stuff that I've worked with, like, you know, they keep their, their log is basically just a gigantic notepad file, <laughs> but it just means going and aggregating all of that information to say, all right, this is where, like, because we, as human beings, we're bad at estimating time, <laughs> especially like long, the longer it goes, the worse it gets, right? Um, we're also bad at, we're bad at estimating everything, but like, you know, if you say, how long did you spend doing X, Y, and Z thing? If it was something that we didn't like doing, we, we say that we spent a lot of time because it felt like a lot of time, even though it probably wasn't. <laughs> um, and so depending on what it is, it's either looking at the logs of what you already do, if you've got detailed logs, if you don't, mm -hmm. then you can either talk to people and do an estimation or what usually happens is that you need to actually observe <laughs> and actually <laughs> log everything. Um, so it sort of depends on what the baseline is, where you're starting and like what which of the different frameworks you're using. Um, right. Typically is expensive um, because the, in most cases, it's bringing in an outside um, yeah. consultant or group that runs right. the audit itself. And, you know, is sort of, because they're outside of that, that body and they're the ones that are supposed to be, you know, making sure everything's being filled out correctly that, and then they do, and then at some point you have to have somebody do an analysis of all of that data. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's it's, like, so we're kind of doing like a watered down version of it. It's like management control. It's like, you know, the height of, of, um, uh, capitalism, like where every minute, if you're working in a factory or working in an office, you're working mm -hmm. with, where every single minute has to be accounted for and they have to see and then when they look and they see how much time, you know, like, you know, too much time is spent going back and forth to the bathroom or the water fountain or, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. I mean, I, it's, I, don't know, I can't think of it. There was a, this funny book in the, like, in the, around the turn of the century, which is, I mean, the turn of the 20th century, which is when this started. And um, it's all about control of the workplace and, and, quantifying every action that you know like every every time somebody picks up a piece of paper every time somebody moves a widget from place to place 
you know, all of that. And I, I don't think that that's something that um, we want to suggest or even get into about the police. I think that there are other ways that uh, Absolutely. a time audit uh, for the police. For one, it would, I mean, this is one of those things that would cost, you know, like God knows, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to do. And, and I mean, there needs to be other ways to make uh, the police time more accountable than a time audit. Right. No, I just wanted to know what it was because it sounded interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to <laughs> remember right, but... what that. I'm going to try to remember what that thing is. I'll send it to you. It's like a night, the early 20th century is when it started. I'm just not thinking of it now. But anyway. Uh, Okay, it's many minutes, but I suppose we can see the minutes. Oh, that's what we just wrote. Did the commission recommend it? But I think we could just skip this whole thing, right? Number five. Maybe just add the last sentence. Yeah, it does feel like we've we've said that before. Yeah, yeah just maybe add the last sentence. Paragraph above. Interesting, we'll add this to the I think, I think something that definitely needs to be in our preliminary report, and it could probably go in part five, is the acknowledgement that this initial 10% is not enough to set up the infrastructure needed to move all of the responsibilities that the police are doing to new um, community-centered um, initiatives. Well, it's just, it's the tip of the iceberg. Right, but that's what I, I wouldn't, in those, wherever it was, those A, B, C, D, E, those things yeah, that I wrote. Two, yeah. That, if you look at C, it says standardized yearly reductions to the NPD as, as uh, and safety responsibilities move to third staff by blah, 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 and include. That's what, I, that's what exactly what I meant by that. I didn't, I didn't say it should be this amount or that amount because I don't think we can say that. But that's what I meant. Standardized yearly reductions to move from the NPD to the other services. That's, that's what originally I had it down at the bottom, but now it's incorporated. The, that's, that's what I, that's, I think is enough for that. I mean, I think yeah, that's what it says. I think we need to repeat it. Right. That's that was what I meant by that. So, uh, right. I just, I, I just, I just want to make sure that it can't be misconstrued. I really want it explicitly in there, like uh, Dan is putting. I believe. Yeah. So, as number two is the opener in recognition that this initial reduction to the budget is not enough mm -hmm. to long term. Uh, to part funding long term community based solutions, we are exploring ways to allocate monies generated from policing. Um, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to miss this. <laughs> really. I would like I would like to believe that no one misses it, but I don't think so. I think people. I mean, when when we give it to the rest of the commission, I think people will. We take Thank that. you, Noah. Also, need to get to the next. Port Newness is putting a new city department and relief. Uh, I think we could probably get rid of the name of the 
a whole thing. Yeah, that, department. Take that part out. Okay, you say department. You could say whose partners might include. Yeah, I think people will get this. I mean, they may not be happy with it, but I think they will understand it. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the thing like, when you present this to the, the city council, it's it's very much a, this is a work in progress. You know, we, we're, we're doing a lot of work. <laughs> you know, we're doing what has taken other cities, you know, years to do in months time, so. This is what we get while we cobble it together um, into something meaningful. Truly. Even this is still, I think we're in much better shape than we would have been if we tried to put something, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Truly. So uh, with this, would we, uh, recognizing Dan, that you, you need to move along to, uh, do we want to just delete number five altogether? And the ideas have been moved up, so. Yeah, I think so. I think that would just come right out. Yeah. That's what and, that's what I was yeah. thinking. And yeah. just all that ideas and the consideration should go. Yeah. And so it's a four part presentation. It looks and yeah. I, I think it's really great. Thank you all so much. Yeah. That's awesome. Um so I will, this, is, this is great. I'll get this into some sort of I'll, I'll format it so it looks a little nicer and get it all uniform. Um and then, uh, let me see. What, also feel free to use it. Sorry, go ahead, both. Oh, I just said, or it says, uh, uh, and other factors, employment availability, increased social wellness program. Um, maybe we could say uh, access to housing instead of at including, you know, employment rather than just have, et cetera. So I know that we're working on a pretty tight time restraint right now. Just some of us have to leave. Uh, do we really quickly just want to discuss when we should be meeting next so I can just write it down? What more do we have to do about this? This, I'm just going to drop it into another document and tidy up the formatting, but I won't change any of the text, but I'll send it along. Um, yeah, if everyone's comfortable, we would be with the full commission next Tuesday to present this. Yeah. I feel good about this. I think the graph is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's great. I think the pie charts are going to really. Yeah, yeah nothing makes my blood boil more like the pie chart under number four. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's but no. I mean, they're really, I think the pie chart is great. Really it's great. a lot when you see but it. This is the context that we need. This is the context that people need to see. Not just people on the commission, but the public needs to see what we're talking about. I mean, the other thing, I mean, anytime that we can put in the word accountability and transparency, the better. But those are the things, I mean, we haven't used the word transparency. And I think that's goes along with the word accountability. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that word in here. And I think that's another part of the issue. It's like they're the, the twin accountability and transparency. 
So when you're going through this, Dan, if you happen to see a place that we can drop that in. Okay. I can take a look. Um, see what I can find for options there. I do have to example the the so I will send along the reformatted document later on this evening just so people can see it, make sure that there's nothing <laughs> that's, that's crazy. We can we can always bring it up on Tuesday amongst each other too. If we, oh we need a change. We need to make an amendment or so, yeah. Yeah. Right. Should we meet the should we meet the following Tuesday, the twelfth? And stay on this Tuesday thing. I can do Tuesday the twelfth. Yeah, works for me. Same time. That would work for me. Yep. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Well, all right. And it's is it at that point is it still collaborative writing or is this being submitted? When is our uh, extension to? I mean, the only until the seventh. The seventh. So next day. Oh, so this would be after. Yeah, yeah. So next Thursday, I need to present this to the city council. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And uh, so we should include public comment that that night, Josie. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. For the twelfth. Uh, approval for the minutes of today. Probably. Yep. Uh, and then the so public comment at the beginning. Do we want to determine uh, an amount of time? Okay, half hour. Half hour. It uh, like that's been I I weirdly, I weirdly feel like uh, because it will be right after a preliminary report, we might get more people. Do you think half uh, the time is gonna like a uh, half hour is gonna be enough? Um, no. I mean, I, I mean people. I think it's enough. I mean, we haven't had that much. I mean, the, the amount of public comment has gone down a lot for all the committees. I mean, there's almost no public comment now. I mean, there was a little for the commission, but um, my question is uh, uh, not about the agenda for the 12th, but um, now we'll, will we send this? Do you want to send this to all the other commissioners in advance of the commission meeting on the 5th. Sorry, could you repeat that? Do we want to send this to all the other commissioners in advance of the meeting on the 5th? It, from my understanding, <clears throat> this document, right? That's what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from my understanding, they should all have access to it via the shared drive, because that's how I found it. Oh. Well, do yeah. people know? To, okay. You can, mean, you can ask Noah to send this out to everyone in an email with the link. Yeah, to it. I think we stand a better chance. Of, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. I don't know what people are, are seeing, really. <laughs> no, I hear you. I really don't. I mean, like, I really don't. I don't know what people are saying. I mean, the only reason that I sort of know what's going on is because I've gone to some of the other committee meetings. Right. And Which, I speaking of other committee meetings, I have to run. But yeah. Um, right. Do you want to do we? Uh, since we have the uh, sorry, since we have the date and time for the next meeting, which I have here on a document, I'm going to send the note right away. Uh, do we want to move to adjourn? Am I yes. capable of doing that? Yes. Yes, you are. All right. Uh, does someone want to do? Uh, yeah. Does anyone want to discuss about the adjourning? <laughs> no. No. All right. Does someone want to do roll call for us real quick? Uh, yes. Uh, Lois. Yeah. Dan. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I say yes. And Josie? Yep. 
Wow. And with that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. See you on the other Thank side. You. I'm going to end the recording here, and you can find it on Northampton Open Media on YouTube. Happy New Year. Right, take it easy, y'all.